By the end of this video, you will learn seven hidden tricks that will help you when you are using MuseScore. Now, these are things that I wish I had known earlier, as well as answers to questions that I receive uh, quite a bit on this channel for how to use MuseScore. There is something in this video for everyone, so beginners as well as advanced MuseScore users will benefit from watching the whole way to the end. Let's get started. So you will want to have MuseScore open, and the first of the seven hidden tricks uh, has to do with a shortcut, and it's something that you might run into uh, if you are trying to make notes that are really short in duration. So you'll notice if I click on the first quarter note, it will be highlighted, and then I've got quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, but then 32nd note. Um, and then I think it goes to like 64th note. But let's say you wanted to get something even smaller than that. If you just highlight the note like I have there, and then on your keyboard, press Q, it will shorten the note. So there it goes to an eighth, and it will uh, keep uh, shortening it by a half. So I can keep pressing Q until basically I run out of space. So again, you can get extremely short notes. And then same thing, it goes the other direction. So if you press uh, W with it selected, it will uh, increase the length of the note. And so let's say I have a quarter note, now it will go to a half note. So Q and W are extremely uh, helpful when you are creating uh, the notes that you are working with. And again, this will help you if you are trying to get something that is a very short note, or it works with rests also. So if I highlight this rest and I do the same thing, Q, it will keep um, uh, making a very ex extremely short rests. Now that brings me to the second of the seven hidden tricks in MuseScore, and that is where to find all of the shortcuts. Now I receive a lot of questions on what are the best shortcuts to use in MuseScore. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer that right now with showing you how to find all of the shortcuts. So basically you wanna go up to the left-hand side, edit, and then click on preferences. And then in the uh, music score preferences, usually starts with general, you want to click over to shortcuts. And then here is where it will list all of the shortcuts that are currently on as a default or, or default preferences for uh, your Muse score. And again, you can just scroll through here and see basically everything that you would want to know. If you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and hit the like button. That really helps this channel out. Uh, I spent a lot of time putting this list together and learning MuseScore and the best tricks that will help you while you are creating your scores. So some of these things you can see as you scroll down, uh, one ones that come to my mind is uh, for putting in lyrics is Control L. And then uh, here's a, if you want to make something italic, what you can do. Okay, and so now, not only will this list every single shortcut that is there, but let's say you wanted to change the shortcut. You can do that also. So let's say the first one here, I wanted to change the next element shortcut. I just double, double click on that uh, element. And then now it, will ask, it, it tells you what the old shortcut is, and then you input the new shortcut right there. And you have to make sure that doesn't conflict with any other shortcut that you currently have in use. So again, uh, you can change the shortcuts as well as uh, see every single shortcut that you would use. So the third hidden trick uh, that you can use in MuseScore is that you can change the score color as well as go from light to dark mode. Uh, so let's go to preferences again, edit preferences. And in general, again, you can do the theme in light to dark mode. So here you go. I can go ahead and click a dark and then press apply. And then now uh, this is easier on the eyes uh, when you're working uh, maybe at night. So there's your dark mode. And then if you want to go back to the light mode, I would just uh, go to light and then press apply. You can also change the score color if I go to the canvas tab. And I can change all things like the background of the of the work, the software that I'm using, but the paper that I'm using, I can change the color for that. And so let's say I wanted to do uh, something a little different. I could put something like a yellow as a uh, background color for my score. And so now uh, the score is yellow. And if you were to print it, it would print up as yellow. And uh, anytime you want to change something back, you can just go back to where you were. Um, Control Z un will undo anything. So that's the shortcut that you will want to know also. The fourth hidden trick is probably one of the most useful hidden tricks, and that is that many times you'll be working with the palettes and you might not be able to find something that you want. And uh, it can be uh, frustrating if you're looking for a very specific thing. You can use search, but that doesn't always work uh, because sometimes we don't always know the names of things that we're looking for. So what you want to do is go up to view and then you want to click on master palette. On my, the shortcut for this is Shift-9. I noticed that for my keyboard, if I press Z, it will bring up the master palette. And then here you can see the master palette has all of these different symbols that you can use on the bottom here. And so you, you will be able to find basically almost any shape that you would want to use in uh, music uh, notation 
for your score that you're creating. And again, the master palette is where you can find all of those things. And so this is extremely helpful for those who are looking for very specific uh, things in MuseScore. Okay, number five of the hidden tricks is something that you can do when you are selecting and editing your music. And that is that you can select similar elements in a selection. So what I mean by that is you can uh, go ahead and make your selection of what you would like to uh, change. And then what you can do is then find an element that you want to change all of the same kind of it. So basically, let's say I want to change all of the quarter notes in this selection. I would just find a quarter note, right click on top of the quarter note, and then you'll see select. And then I can select all similar elements. You can also uh, all similar elements in the same staff and so forth, but all similar, similar, similar elements in the selection. I will click that. And then now you notice that each of those note heads was selected. So in that case, I was able to select the note heads. Um, let's say I wanted to change the, the stems on each of the selections. So basically what I would do, same thing, is that I would right click on a stem and then I can select all similar elements. And now it's selected each of the stems. And again, this is it makes it easier for editing large chunks of music at the same time. Number six on the hidden tricks is how to make things visible and invisible. And this is very helpful when you are trying to hide something like a rest. And so basically what you want to do is select the rest that you want to, uh, or the element that you want to make invisible. So I have it selected and the inspector element will come out on the right hand side. If you can't see the inspector, just push view, click view and then click on inspector. And then it will show up on the right hand side and you see the first option there is visible or invisible. And so there I made the note invisible. And then this will is helpful if, if you want to hide anything in the score. Uh, it works for uh, text as well. And so uh, you can click on the text and then same thing. You can click on uh, visible and that will make or invisible and that will make it invisible. Number seven on this list of seven hidden tricks is uh, that you can import images into MuseScore, into your score. And so one the way you do this is in the, the frame here on the top, the vertical frame, what you want to do is make sure you have that frame there and then right click on that frame or in the frame. And then you will notice that there is a uh, option here for add. And then at the end of that is add image. And so now it will bring up the images that I can add. And let's say I wanted to add this image. Now I can have that image in there and I can move the image around to the different places in the score that I would like it. If I want to delete, just press delete on your keyboard. And so uh, adding images to your music is certainly helpful, especially if you're creating any kinds of uh, like music worksheets or something that's used for maybe a school setting or a student, uh, you maybe have students that you want to uh, put some images in with the music that you're creating. I wanted to include a bonus tip in this list of hidden tricks. And that tip is that you can go to the breaks and spacers and over on the palette side, let's say I would like to bring the bass clef closer to the treble clef. Then you come over to the staff spacer fixed and then drag that there. And then this one, I can drag it up or down. And so that, those are the, the easiest ways to use the breaks and spacers. And again, very helpful for those who are using MuseScore. So I hope you were able to learn something new from this video with uh, how to use MuseScore that will help you in the scores that you are creating. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I do my best to answer those. I have other MuseScore tutorials available. I'll put links to them around this video. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. I thank you and I'll see you in the next video.